Hey there. We are going to try to take uh, some old used terracotta pots that have a lot of salt buildup and just general wear and tear on them of uh, different sizes. And we are going to try and whitewash them today and uh, see if we can get them to look a little bit better and then we'll seal them uh, for a nice look. You can either use a latex paint or an acrylic paint. Um, for this, I'm going to experiment using just a Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover White uh, latex paint. And I'm going to dilute it. I put about a teaspoon of water because you're not going to need very much. Um, open up this paint can. And you, there are lots of different ways you could do this. You could use uh, paintbrushes, old rags. Um, I had a sponge, so I'm going to be using this sponge. And I'm going to pour a little bit of the paint. Yeah, that's going to be yeah, a lot. I also need to get my latex gloves because this is probably going to be a little bit messy and you're gonna to wanna to be as clean as possible. So, hold on and I'll get this. And like magic, I have them. So, I am doing this video kind of spontaneously. So I do not have all the proper setup, but I have enough. Stir the paint in the water. My assistant Zorro is here to help. All right, so I've thinned probably about half paint, half water. And uh, I've never done this before, but I've seen some other people do it. And I'm just going to experiment doing it myself. So it may take several coats. You know, the older the pot, I just wanted to give it a nice look so that it's not, um, I don't know, so easy to see the salt build up, the dirt, all of those things on it. I want it to look a little natural and weathered. Now, the sponge is leaving streaks, but I think I'm okay with that because I will go back in a little bit. See, terracotta is so porous that it is immediately soaking up a lot of that water. And when I go over it again, second time, it's grabbing more of the paint that is left in the sponge. And you could do this where you start off uh, heavier on the bottom and then you lighten around the top or perhaps vice versa. There are lots of different ways you could do this. But again, um, I'm doing some that are in bright, vibrant colors where they don't look whitewashed or weathered. And then I'm trying some uh, like this. So you're gonna get your choice of how you want the pots to look. Now the easiest way, I'm going to stop there because now I need to put it down to dry. There are some rough spots in terracotta pots where either uh, it's a natural indentation in the clay or maybe um, some algae buildup or something was there. So I'm just working with that as I go along. I'm not saying I love it right away. So we're going to see how this evolves. But I'm going to set it down to dry. And now I will start with the small one. See, maybe on the small one, I'll go with a heavier coat the first time and see if that does anything. I will be doing the inside of these because uh, we're going to seal them with one of the uh, many sealers I read that you can use on terracotta pots. It will help you water less, uh, but you have to be careful because right now terracotta pots 
a lot of aeration, so they do have a lot of breathability. So if you overwater, it will probably dry out and not too be and not be too bad for let's say succulents or whatever. But you can definitely overwater for other things um, once these are glazed. So it's going to be a different beast. I think I have some gray paint. So I am going to put this pot down to dry. And I'm going to go see if I can find some gray paint and see if we can do some sort of combination gray and white going on. This pot's basically already dry. But it doesn't quite look what I want it to look like. So now, I did get some different types of gray. Let me see what I have here. I have a flat gray here with a sample. So let's see what we think of it. So now I'm going to go over with the gray. But you know what? I am liking this a lot better already. Because the white was almost like you were trying too hard. But this is looking pretty good in the weather department. I wouldn't say perfect. It's my first attempt. But what I like is that I'm getting splotchy areas all around. Some are more white, some are more gray. And I think as long as I don't have any runny streaks, because that's what I'm trying to prevent now, I see a bunch of them. And it's actually going to be a pretty good look. And then I'm going to have to probably go over it a few more times with both gray and white. I'm just kind of amazed how fast the pots are drying. Like they almost dry in your hands because of the latex paint and the porosity of the, of the pots. But I guess one point I want to say is no matter what you do, you're at least toning down the terracotta. You could also do this with a terracotta color and really enhance that terracotta. Because terracotta by itself is a very nice color, but once it has all the dirt and buildup and everything on it, I don't like it. So you could also glaze a just blank terracotta pot. I'm actually liking this one. I like the way that's... Turn these over. And now I'm going to start doing the inside. The same process. I'm beginning with the white. And I'm going to get pretty far down into this because whenever the dirt settles, uh, it tends to look, I mean, if it, if it falls down and you start seeing the terracotta pot again, it's just bleh. Not a good look. And the paint is pretty non-toxic. So you can, and plus once you seal it, that is not going to get into your dirt at all. So you'll be okay in that. So you can kind of tell the difference between the way these are going. This one just has a little bit more um, oomph to it than this one. Still splotchy and patterned, kind of marbleized, and I like that. Drying time, by the way, on all of these are going to depend completely on your environment. So your humidity level, your temperature outside, the wind conditions, all that. So at this point, I think I'm going to leave these as is. And then we're going to go and wait for them to dry. And then we will glaze them. I said I'm going to leave them as is, but of course, I'm doing one more round. As I'm looking at the camera, they look very different on camera than they do um, in real life. Okay. We're going to finish up what we've done with this 2X uh, clear gloss. You can also get matte if you don't want quite so shiny. There's also other products you can use like Flex Seal and... Lots of other ones. Uh, I tried this on some previous examples and uh, they worked really well. So I think that's what I'm gonna use on these. And it's pretty straightforward. 
These pots did not take long to dry and the weathered look is good. At least it'll hide some of the salt and everything for right now. And they're gonna go with a lot of other different colors. So it'll just be something different to work with. Light coats are important so you don't get any dripping look. And uh, it gives it a nice even tone. And then you can go over it as many times as you want. All right, so we're gonna let that sit. And that will be coat one. Hello. So I let this pot sit for about three days and I'm actually digging the color. I didn't know what to expect out of it, but uh, it came out pretty good. Uh, the outside, after I sprayed it with the sealant, is looking great. Uh, the inside did not hold up as well, but you know, I got down to a good point in which I'm gonna be able to cover with soil. It'll be fine. But for some reason, that interior lip did not go um, as planned. But I sealed the inside as well, as you guys saw. So now comes the fun part. So I'm gonna give this little bad boy succulent a home in the new pot. So I use my own homemade mix. So I do uh, a combination of peat moss or cocoa fiber, depends on how environmentally aware uh, and conscious you want to be. And then I use perlite, vermiculite, some really good compost or aged manure. And then um, you can, you know, add fertilizer in there at the time if you want, but uh, it's up to you. And I, I want it to be a little bit higher because this soft, soft soil is going to set over time. In fact, I'm going to press it down pretty good so that I have a good um, side line that I can follow so I kind of know where it's going to be. That's not going to go down much. So then I'm going to backfill with soil. Now, we live in a very dry climate and I'm probably not going to water this boy too much. So, I'm going to also top dress him with red volcanic rock because A, it's gonna look nice and it will keep the weeds from growing. And then anytime I do water it, it's going to be a really good mulch that helps the water that I do put in stay in. Now, since the fact that this pot's gonna be glazed and have the volcanic rock, you're not gonna have to water it nearly as much because it's going to be uh, holding that water pretty good. And so this is the final product. Thanks for watching the videos. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be doing more of these uh, tutorials and other fun videos that you can watch all the time and uh, make sure you hit the like button and I will see you guys soon.